Hey, this is Kat. If you like crafting, then you'll want to subscribe to my YouTube channel where I show you all kinds of fun things to create. Hey, it's Kat, and I have a Easter wreath here for you today. So um, I'm starting with the Dollar Tree wreath form with pipe cleaners already on it. The pipe cleaners are coordinated for the color mesh that I'll be putting on. So I'm starting with the white, and I'm going to scrunch using the natural curl to that mesh. And I'm going to just walk my fingers across the table and kind of gather it in the center. Then I'm going to find an open pipe cleaner on the outer rim of my reform and twist my pipe cleaner to fasten off, to kind of hold the mesh in place. I'm using white, lavender, and a mint color. So I'm repeating the same process with my lavender. Again, I'm just kind of scrunching it together in the middle and with those cut edges going to the back of my wreath and finding the purple pipe cleaner and, and putting it in and twisting it off one time. We'll come back and add ribbon on top of that so we don't want to tie it off entirely. Next, I'm moving on to the mint and I'm repeating the same process. And I will continue to do this all the way around the wreath and going in the same order with white, purple, and mint, adding on the outside. There are 12 pieces of mesh on the outer circle of the wreath form, and then there'll be nine on the inside. I will fast forward and come back when we start on the inside. Okay, so we have all the outer mesh on and now it's time to start on the inside as i said earlier there are nine pieces of mesh for the inner circle of the wreath form and it's the same process you're going to scrunch the mesh working across and gathering the middle the inner inner pieces of mesh i use are smaller than the outer ones and i'm going to find a purple and fasten it onto with the pipe cleaner and again i'm going to repeat that going the purple white and teal in the same order that it was done before. So originally I started with white and then I went purple and teal. And here I started with purple. So I'm going purple, teal, or mint, um, whatever one, color you want to call it. And then the white. <laughs> Okay, let's, now that all the mesh is on, I'm going to move this out of the way, and we're going to talk about ribbon. I use 10 different ribbon patterns. So I usually cut four of each pattern. So I've got, as you can see, I've got four in the mint color or teal. Then I've got four of the purple bunnies and the white glitter, along with two lavender prints, each four, a four each. Then I have four of the pinks. Now with this one, I actually had cut five of each pair. So I'm going to move the sets of fours out of the way, and I'm only going to work with the one that I have five of, of each. Now one thing I want to note, you want to um, pinch the ribbon together in the center like this, and then take the one you're partnering it with and pinch again and form an X. It does not matter which one's on top. It's just um, the way I do it, it helps. You don't have to uh, separate your ribbons as much at the back end. I'm gonna find an open spot to start and I'm going to um, pull the pipe cleaners and then I'm going to tuck those tails of those pipe cleaners to the back side of my reform. So I'm pushing them through and then I'm going to show you by flipping over my wreath. And there we go. 
and I'm just going to twist them off a couple times here. I always like to make sure that when I'm twisting off my pipe cleaners that I span two bars. Okay, so I started like at the 12 o'clock position. My next set, again, it doesn't matter which one goes on top and which is on bottom, but you want to pair them together. You do want to make note of the direction of your ribbon. Um, some ribbons have a pattern and you want to make sure they're putting it so that they all go in the same direction. Now I'm going to go with my second ribbon placement around the two o'clock position, between two and three. Um, so if you're thinking of your wreath like a, a clock, I'm going to go to that two o'clock position. And both, the one on the first one was on the inside, my second one is on the outside. And so I'm going to tuck my pipe cleaners again to the back side of my wreath. And I'm going to flip this over and show you. Now this is the one that's, um, I always want to make sure I did not go over two, but I always want to go over the two bars. And even those that are on the, just the extreme outside, I want to make sure they cover two bars on the back. It'll help it from keeping your mesh and ribbon from rolling towards the back of the wreath. Okay. Now the next set of ribbons I'll put on, I'm going to put on about the five o'clock position. And then I'm going to go to seven. And about 10. Now, at either this juncture, at either the five o'clock or the seven o'clock position, I want to make sure to put another one on the inside. All right, and the reason why we're just alternating. On this case, I'm gonna go on the outside, so then that means my seven o'clock position, I will definitely put that one on the inside. And this just helps to spread out your ribbon. So I'm gonna finish putting those last two on, and then we'll come back. Okay, so now what we're left with is we're left with the four the sets, four pairs of ribbon. So I'm going to separate them out um, and make them into the four, four piles. And I find it easier to work this way. Um, it avoids, if you're just putting on all of one set of ribbon, I do find that you tend to end up in a predicament sometimes where you get the same ribbon next to each other. But by working in this sets after I've got the initial five on, it does keep me from, it does keep me, keep the ribbon more spread out is what I'm trying to say. So again, I'm just separating into the to four stacks of each of the different styles of ribbon. And then I'm going to take three and put them to the side and only work with one stack. Okay, so finding a spot doesn't matter where, but you're going to start pairing up the two sets of ribbon, the two, two ribbon, and start putting them in and filling in as you work your way around that wreath form. And it's the same process. You're going to lay the ribbon in, you're going to push the pipe cleaners to the back, and you're going to fasten off. So I'm going to work my way around and get all this ribbon on, and then we'll move on to the next steps. So we've got all the ribbon on, now it's time to finish off the back of the wreath. 
I like to twist off my pipe cleaners and um, kind of trim them up and tuck them in. This way it prevents it from scratching the surface of the door that you may be hanging or the wall that you're hanging on. So I use wire cutters to trim them and then my needle nose pliers to kind of roll the tips down. And so basically I'm just going to go around and make sure they're tight and fasten them off. So I'm going to speed up and come back. Okay, now it's time to add the sign. So I'm using this cute bunny polka dot sign. It's metal. So what I do is I use uh, fishing line or monofilament. And I found these this nifty tool that pokes holes in my metal signs. I was trying to drill and that didn't work out very well. So I found that and that has been quite useful. So I'm going to kind of figure out where I want to place my sign. I want to pay attention to the ribbon direction to make sure I'm not putting the sign one direction and having all the ribbon upside down. Um, and so I then will work my way tucking those, um, that fishing line back to the back side of the wreath. Now I know it's impossible to see this on a video because fishing line is so thin to begin with, but basically I am kind of pushing down on my sign. I'm pulling out any ribbon that's behind my sign. I leave the mesh but I do pull the ribbon and I always can tuck the ribbon back in once the sign is placed, but at least this way I'm not pulling it out afterwards and creating um, some extra space. So I'm going to then take this other side and um, tuck the fishing line to the back. And basically that's all. Once I've got both tips or both ends of the fishing line on one side, tucked into the back, I flip the wreath over and secure it by tying off around some of the metal bars, crossbars, not necessarily the round ones. I'll show you what I mean in just a moment. So I'm just going to feed this through. Bear with me. Then I grab both ends of the fishing line in one hand so I can put a little tension. And then I usually put one hand on the sign just so it doesn't completely fall away. Um, and I'm making sure that they've got the top ones going up, flip it over. Now I'm going to try and keep a little tension in that on the fishing line side that I'm not working with. And so I'm going to wrap it around the crossbar and then I'm going to come back and I'm going to tie off to this bar here. Um, and again, I'm just wrapping it around and then I'm going to secure that one and hold that one while I do the next one and I go up around this crossbar. I try and incorporate a couple crossbars. It gives it a little bit more tension and kind of helps to keep the sign in place. Now fishing line, when you tie it off, it can slip. Um, so you do definitely want to throw a bunch of knots. Um, so usually I'll do one or two throws um, of a knot and then I'll check the tension to make sure I have my sign hasn't slipped. Um, so I'll flip it over, just double check, and if everything looks good and it's still in the place where I want it, I'll go ahead and throw about two more throws here. I'll wrap around another bar and then cut, throw about four throws again. So it's just a way to keep things um, from slipping. <laughs> Okay, so now I'm going to work on the top one and it's the same process. Again, I'm pulling out the ribbon that I want. I want all the ribbon out and leaving the mesh and then I'm going to kind of, there's two pieces of monofilament or a fishing line up here and I'm basically going to tuck it to the back side and repeat the same process. So I'm going to speed it up a little bit, but basically I'm repeating the same process I did for the lower half. <laughs> Oh, 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 oh,
is a wire hanger. So I use about a six inch piece of wire and I find the top and I'm basically gonna attach this to the top ring using my needle nose pliers. I do this because not everyone uses a wreath hanger and um, some people use a hook or nail and this way it gives them that, an opportunity to use this to hang. Um, where we live, it's quite windy so you kind of have to put it on a smaller, um, to keep it from spinning and twisting. Um, and, and basically you can even twist this onto, I use 3M hooks to hang mine and they work really well, but you could do it however you want. So that's the reason why I put this on. Once this is on, the last step is just fluffing your wreath, um, moving the ribbon to the direction you want them. And that's pretty much it. Um, and it's good. You're finished.